to MN Arts YouTube channel and kindly remember to subscribe so that you can get the notifications of our videos as we upload them. The subscribe button is at my far left. God meets us in Christ. Welcome to our Christian Religious Education Form 2 classes where we are starting with the Davidic prophecies that point out to the coming of the Messiah. You're welcome to our Form 2 lesson, Lesson 1. Hello learners. Today we are going to learn uh, CR Form 2 and our topic is about God meets us in Jesus Christ. You are welcome. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, how God meets us in the life and in the ministry of Jesus Christ here on earth. The history of Jesus Christ is found in the book of St. Luke. St. Luke is one of the Gospels and it was written by Dr. Luke who was a disciple of Jesus Christ. The book of St. Luke is chosen for us to have uh, the life of Jesus Christ from it because it is a very special Gospel that was addressed to Theophilus who was a Gentile. It also addresses other Gentiles and outcasts like the Good Samaritan, that is the Samaritans. It also addresses uh, the lepers. So that is why this book is so special that it is not only uh, talking about uh, the Hebrews or the Jewish people. Uh, that is why we choose the book of uh, St. Luke so that we can uh, extract uh, the the, the, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ from it. And we start by uh, looking at the prophecies of the Old Testament that were pointing forward to the coming of the Messiah. Because it is through this Messiah that God is going to meet us. And this Messiah is Jesus Christ himself. And so we are talking about the Old Testament prophecies that are pointing forward to the coming of the Messiah. And our first concern is to define the term Messiah. The term Messiah means the anointed one. Kingship in Israel could go with anointing, that the king was supposed to be anointed by God's servant with oil so that he can lead having been uh, filled with the spirit of God. The oil was to usher the servant to the spirit of God and then he could now lead the people under the leadership or the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so <clears throat> the Messiah who was to come and lead the Israelites, it was famously believed that he was to be an anointed king. That is the only way that somebody could lead and therefore the leader who could come to lead the Israelites he was to be an anointed. Uh, we also talk about the term covenant and the covenant means an agreement between people. So the Israelites were a covenant people who had entered a covenant with God back on uh, Mount Sinai during the time of the Exodus. So they lived in a life that it was binding. Their relationship was binding. From time to time, they could walk uh, with the your God uh, together. And now <clears throat> we have uh, this king that they are expecting uh, to lead them and this king uh, uh, was prophesied about in the Old Testament. Uh, we also look at the term prophecy and we find out that the term prophecy means prediction, a future prediction. And so the Old Testament prophets predicted about the coming of the Messiah, the coming of a righteous king who could rule the children of Israel, the 12 houses of Israel. And um, this king who was to be born, was to be born in the house of David. That is according to the prophets. We have Nathan, the first prophet who talked about the coming of the Messiah. We have... Isaiah, we have the psalmist 
and we have Jeremiah. All these men of God predicted about the coming of this righteous king. And uh, these prophecies were taught to the children of Israel until they became part of them. And so we are looking at the famous expectations of the Messiah, the famous Jewish expectations of the Messiah. The Jewish believed that the Messiah who was to be born was to be from the house of David. He was to be a descendant of David, the lineage of David. They believed like that. They also believed that he was to be a man. So this was to be a baby boy who could be born in the house of David. The Jewish also believed that the king was to be born by a very young woman who is a virgin. You see? So they expected a virgin to give birth to a child who is a baby boy and he was to be in the house from the house of David. Those are the expectations of these people. They also believed that the Messiah was to be righteous, to lead people in righteousness. They also, they are one of Another expectation was that this man of God was to be anointed with the spirit of God. He was to lead people in spirit. They also believed that he could walk in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah was a great prophet in the Old Testament. And finally, they also believed that uh, the Messiah was not to mix with outcasts he was not to mix with the with the lepers with the people who are suffering from leprosy from with prostitutes no so david went to nathan and told him he went to nathan and told him that he had built his own palace which was magnificent it was beautiful and exalted it had costed him time costed him uh, money. He had given a lot of attention to that palace and it was a source of pride for him. And David felt sorry that God was dwelling in a tent. God was dwelling in a structure that was temporary. So, because David respected God, because, because David respected God, he, he went to Nathan and requested him to go and inquire from God. Or he went to inquire from Nathan whether it was right for him to build God a house. A beautiful house. A classic house. And Nathan told him, please go ahead and do it. Build God a good house like the one you have built for yourself. And David uh, felt that his desires had been met. But that night, God came to Nathan and forbid him, told him what you told David is not right. Go and forbid David from building me the house uh, of worship. I cannot dwell in a structure. I have not demanded. And he told Nathan that because David has shown a lot of respect for me, I have a reward for him. You will go and uh, pronounce these promises that I am giving you to him. And uh, of course, uh, we have other reasons why God forbid David from building him a house. He forbid him because David was busy expanding the house of the, the territory of the land of Israel. That was uh, exhaustive enough. He also forbid him because David was uh, busy uniting the 12 houses of Israel, which he found disunited. David was also having a lot of blood in his hands, you know. He, he could uh, kill many people when he was going out, when he was going out for war. And God is holy, and God values human life, so he could not allow David to build him a house. And so, Nathan now journeyed to the house of uh, King David, and he told him, uh, that is the following morning, he told him, uh, David, I'm sorry, I allowed you to build the house for God, and God has said you should not. 
David being obedient, he knew that is what is going to happen. And now, Nathan gave him the following promises. Number one, he has promised an everlasting dynasty for your kingdom. God has promised an everlasting dynasty. That one is not human at all. There's no human being who can rule people forever. So, there is some divine element here. And that is why we are talking about Jesus Christ coming to fulfill this promise of an everlasting dynasty. He also promised that uh, he could uh, make uh, a heir from the house of David, that his own son could inherit his uh, kingship. That was uh, good to the ears of David. That God was so happy that he now decided that the next king could come again from the house of David. Just because David decided uh, or thought to build God a house. Think something positive that you could do to God. Even to go and, uh, and uh, bless uh, the man of God who is leading us. Or the servant of God who is leading us. Just to think of something that you can do because God becomes happy and he rewards us directly. And then, uh, that is, uh, first he uh, promised him an everlasting dynasty in his kingdom. And his own son could become his heir. Then, he also promised that uh, his own heir, who is his son now, could build God a house. You see, those are uh, powerful promises that God made to King David through Nathan and then we also have uh, God promised David that he could uh, uh, bless uh, him that his throne could be everlasting he also promised David that the heir of David who is his own son could become a son to God and God could be his father now and uh, God also promised that he could, be, he could establish David's house forever. Things that we cannot imagine. How can a house be established forever? We live for a short while and we go. And another generation comes. So this house that was to be established forever. And this dynasty that was to be established forever. Is realized in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ who was born in the house of David. And now, uh, uh, and so, uh, the prophecies touched on the life of David. They also touched on uh, the son of David who was to be uh, the heir of David. But it also touched on a future leader who is uh, uh, to continue with the lineage of David. To continue with the house of David so God could establish the house of David forever and that God could establish his lineage his dynasty forever you see and that is now where Jesus comes in that is what we have learned today we have learned about uh, God meeting us in Jesus Christ and how does he meet us in Jesus Christ uh, he meets us in Jesus Christ because Jesus is uh, the predicted uh, Messiah in the New Te in the Old Testament, and uh, then we look at the prophecies in the Old Testament that uh, pointed forward to the coming of the Messiah, and we said uh, a prophecy is a prediction, and a Messiah is a minted king, and then we have also looked at uh, uh, the main books that uh, talked about this Messiah. Or the main prophets we have Nathan as the first messiah I mean as the first prophet then we have Isaiah then we have the psalmist and we have Jeremiah and uh, we talked about uh, this story is very well uh, clearly narrated in the gospel according to St. Luke and um, uh, where Jesus, Jesus perfectly uh, fulfills the predictions. We also talk about um, the expectations of the Jewish on the Messiah 
they expected him to be born of a very young woman. He was to be a, a boy, and that is a man in this case. He was also to be born in the house of David to rule the Israelites in righteousness, and he was not to mix with the outcasts. And then we talked about the Davidic prophecies now. We may also not forget about uh, some verse in the book of Genesis, which was showing out that there could be a king who could come to rule and defeat the enemy. And this is in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where uh, Adam and Eve had uh, fallen from the grace of God, and God came in very quickly to repair this relationship. And when he was repairing the relationship, he spelled out punishment for the culprits. He spelled punishment or judgment on uh, Adam, and then he spoke about uh, the woman and the serpent. And they said that the woman could give rise to a seed who could come to crush the head of the serpent. And now this woman is what we are seeing uh, in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was born of a woman, so Jesus is a seed of a woman, and he is going right to defeat the plans of the enemy, of Satan, on uh, uh, the human race. So Jesus will crush the devil on the cross and we shall have life everlasting. So we have said uh, the, the Davidic promises and uh, or predictions and they were given by Nathan to David. Thank you for joining me. Be blessed. Thank you so much. I hope you have learned a lot about the Davidic prophecies that point out to the coming of the Messiah. Remember to press the subscribe button, like, share, and comment. You can also place your questions there so that we can have a look at them in our next lessons. More lessons are on the way. Stay in our YouTube channel.